Admiral's Log. Entry by Admiral Sergei Fyodorovich Kuznetsov. I'm now in command of the Navy following Admiral Petrov's exit due to troubles with protecting our merchant fleet. It's a serious issue we've got to get right. My approach is straightforward, but carefully thought out. Firstly, safeguarding our trading ships is top priority. These vessels are crucial for our nation's needs and commerce. I'm implementing robust escort strategies and plotting smarter, safer routes to outmaneuver enemy forces. Secondly, we're revamping our combat tactics. It's about being strategic, hitting quickly where the enemy least expects, and avoiding unnecessary head-on clashes. Holding on to key strategic points is vital, rather than stretching ourselves thin across too many fronts. Finally, readiness is key. Intensive training and constant preparedness are what I'm driving. Our sailors need to be adaptable, ready for varied challenges. Ships must be maintained not just for readiness, but also for peak performance. This approach is about being smart, not just strong. Keeping our ships safe, being tactical in our engagements, and ensuring readiness at all times, that's how we'll make solid progress. Challenges are ahead, no doubt, but with this focused strategy, I'm confident in our Navy's ability to rise and succeed. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It's episode 16, and as you've heard, some things have changed. We have a new Admiral. Admiral Petrov has been relieved from command because he massively mismanaged the defense of the merchant fleet. The situation is a few months later than where I last left you, so let me catch you up. It is now December 1912, so it's seven months after. Uh, once again, I am trying to take some territory from the Austro-Hungarians. Um, so far, largely unsuccessful. The only major offense that we have some progress on is the one that has, yeah, 36%. That's about it. Now, the Germans are also on the move, and this has me very concerned. Because I do have a decent defense over here in eastern Poland, but the guys over here have an army that is substantially larger. There's 1.3 million men coming in, and that's just half, because there's another 1.5 million coming in from the west. So it is entirely likely that I will lose this province, uh, which would basically mean I'm going to end up with a net score. I have tried going to peace with Germany, but that is largely impossible. Now, over in the east, I have lost a lot of transports. My economy has crumbled, and this is um, really starting to hurt. Because my naval budget, naval, uh, yeah, naval funds, it used to be about 500 million a month. It's now 477. So it is dwindling. And even as I try and build up more transport cap, I lose more per month than I gain. Tech budget has been cut to 20%, crew training is 50%, and I have now researched or focused researched on ASW, anti-submarine warfare. The amount of ships I have lost to submarines is ribs, well, it's just ridiculous, and I want to put a stop to it. So I'm going to be focusing on anti-submarine warfare. I want to put that on my DDs as quickly as possible. It's the only priority that I have right now, because I have not a single ship capable of dealing with submarines, and the Japanese are pretty happy exploiting that one deficit. Over on the west, we have a confrontation that we're going to be running right now. It is my battleship. It's very old. It's the Ravel. Never seen the ship before, at least not on screen. Um, 1900 Admiralski of Cetro class, and it has 11-inch guns, six of them. Facing her is what seems to be a far more modern, although that might be an assumption, Marlboro. Um, it is owned by the Dutch. Of all people, but the Dutch are the ally of the Germans, and as such, um, any of their ships are fair game too. So I suspect that what happened here, they either bought this from the Germans or from the Brits, and it is now serving the Dutch, although it is now effectively serving the Germans. So let's see what this ship brings to the fight. The Ravel has been reactivated after being mothballed in Klaipeda, and thankfully she has a, crane, a trained crew, but the fact that she's so old, with old systems, old radar, well, not radar, um, old rangefinders, that has me kind of concerned. So we're going to have to see just how well or how poorly this fight is going to go, because the Ravel 
Well, she's not tested yet. She's not battle tested. Uh, with her, we have the Cascav, a scout cross cruiser from the 1910s, I think. We have the Leitnant Dadimov, and we have Varyag. These are all the scout cruisers uh, that might have had something to do with me selling off the heavy cruisers. The heavy cruisers that were part of the Baltic fleet, uh, I simply don't have those anymore. So this means we're going to have to just use these guys as is. And, well, no heavy cruisers. Um, the biggest guns that I have are 11s, followed by 4-inch guns. There's no 8s, 9s, whatever. There's no real anti-cruiser guns, and that does have me a little concerned. I first want to know what this battleship is, how much damage it can do, and I am very interested in taking it out. Taking a big win, and then using that win to immediately go to peace with the Germans, because I cannot stop that invasion. And I don't believe that I have any resources that I can allocate to this particular area to try and fix the situation very quickly. Now, this does appear, at least visually, to be an older German warship. And as such, it well, sorry, Dutch warship, it might not be that big of a threat. But it's not something I will easily discard. The plan, use the Ravel as, um, well, as a tank, because... Right now, the guns on this battleship, which are only 9.7 inches, they're not very sizable. They don't have a lot of firepower. They don't have a lot of oomph. They cannot pen the armor, at least not at this range. They're also low fuel, so this ship's going to be slow. So if Ravel can get close, I can then charge in with the CLs and pump that battleship full of torpedoes. That's the plan. That's what I'm going to do. Of course, it's not so simple as to just sail up to the guy and uh, greet them with a hail of torpedoes, because they also have this. This has a couple of 7.3 inch guns, so it's... well... It's quite docile, I think. It's not that dangerous. Uh, it also doesn't have a whole lot of guns. It, well, it has 3 inches and 3.5, and so yeah, to that extent it can be dangerous, but main guns? Just 7 inches? I'm not that scared of that. So, um, again, tank everything with Ravel and then have the light cruisers, which are far faster at 29 knots, all of them, charge the battleship and take it out of commission. I just need to get a couple of hits in on this thing first. Slow it down a bit more of the CLs to catch up. And then we might be able to make something happen. Let's see, CLs. Off you go. Now... The armies, they have army logistics. Um, army logistics, from what I've been able to tell, is influenced by what sort of firepower your navy has, what sort of firepower their navy has. Um, and that's both influenced by the type of ships that you have, the number of ships that you have, as well as the tech level that you have. Um, or haven't, in my case, because according to the game, I am very far behind. The Admiral that I have right now... His doctrine is not very much on development of new weaponry. He's going to be training crews. He's going to be using some smaller boats. So we're not going to be investing too much into battleships or battle cruisers. Uh, we're going to be using potentially some submarines if I can get away with it. And beyond that, I want to be focusing more on destroyers. Destroyers, light cruisers and some submarines. We're going to have to try and cripple the merchant fleets of, well, basically everybody else make their life very, very, very difficult. And we're going to do that by hitting them with small ships. Raids, try and be everywhere at once. Um, if we take out their navy, we will also be able to disrupt their ability to project power with their army because their logistics rating will go down. Or at least, ow, that is the plan. This is not very healthy for my ship. Uh, please listen to my orders. Don't flood. That's bad for your health. What is your status? Spacious quarter, standard bulkheads. Oh, you're a disaster waiting to flood. Oh, speaking of... Inbound torpedo. This thing also comes with torps bow launched. Stern launched. Alright, hard starboard. Bring the launchers uh, to bear on this target. Oh, you are in trouble, my friend. Can we please pen this? Or pretend to? Oh, you're not even hitting it. Alright, dude. Dadimov. 
Let's see if the lieutenant still has it where it counts, which is in her torpedo armament. 419. Ow, Jesus. Inch torpedoes should be able to make at least a couple of sizable holes in this particular target. It's just that she won't fucking launch. Not something I can explain either, because I'm not in some sort of desperate turn. I'm not really asking the ship to turn the torpedo launchers too fast. The target ship is awful slow. Like, I don't know what other launch conditions this ship is looking for. Because this is about as good as it's going to get. And I don't have any destroyed torpedo launchers either. They're looking at the target. Don't worry about the Cascav being in the way. Or the Kafkaz. At this rate, this first engagement, ow, it's not going to go too well. See, this is what those guns are extremely dangerous at. Shoot the fucking torpedoes! 35% chance to pen, a 30% chance to hit. The only thing that I can imagine is that my ships are all very hesitant to launch because we're all getting in each other's way. If I launch with Varyag, yeah, there she goes. The Varyag just launched her torps. Um, Kaskav, oh, the Kaskav also launched torps. Sorry, Kafkaz. Now that ought to do it because we're going to be penning torpedoes, bow and stern. Yeah, that could be it for that battleship. I think they might have had, like, a friendly in the way and decided that that was not okay. And as such, decided... Ooh, ammo detonation. Uh, decided that that was a really bad play, so they wouldn't launch. Now, I, I'm very much at risk of losing at least a light cruiser. Potentially more. But they will lose a battleship at this rate. Look at that buoyancy. 28, 26... I hate to see the Dutch flag go down, but, well, somebody had to. The Dutch just joined the wrong side. There she goes, heavy flooding. GG, there goes your battleship. <clears throat> All right, um, if I can get this particular light cruiser out, that'd be fantastic. I need to keep her alive. You're going to engage the Veneta. It's that heavy cruiser with bulkheads? Many bulks. Okay, how about you, my friend? Many, many men, but few quarters, or few bulkheads. Okay, I can make that work. I can make that work. I'm thinking, however, that with that 4.2, they can also make it work against me, but not that well. Not that well. Okay, use it. Ow, ow, ow. Ow. Look, dude, this is not particularly helpful, right? Pavel, how are you dealing with the Veneta? Because she still has torpedoes, but they are extremely short range. What are we looking at? 18 inches? Really fast. Oh boy. Yeah, that's no joke, that torpedo. Where will the torpedo launcher? I mean, if you get close, they will mess you up. If you stay at range beyond the two kilometers, they really aren't going to be that much of an issue. It's just the getting close part, that's the worst concern. Could you stop blowing holes in my light cruiser with your DD? That'd be fantastic. Stop with the nonsense range finding. You have found the range. I just need you to actually use it. Alright. My objective here is going to be to sink the heavy cruiser. And then let the DD escape. Because right now I am ahead by a very large margin. I've sunk a battleship. I have lost no ships. If I can make this work, then by all means. We're approaching that two kilometer range. I'm, I know I'm skirting around that range. It's just that at this range, I will be very accurate with those 11 inches and I can pretty quickly end this ship. Or at least you'd think so. They have launchers probably bow, starboard, port, stern. So it's gonna be difficult for them to get a torpedo off. But it's something I'm keeping a very close eye on. Let's keep the HE loaded. Can we pen this with HE? Because then we can finish it. 
Nope, that was not a pen. Definitely cost them some crew, but it was not a pen. Here's the smoked up destroyer. Come on, Veneta. There she goes, flooding again. And that destroyed... No, damaged the conning tower. This thing expensive. 70 million. Mine are 28 million, the heavy cruiser. Oh, sorry, the light cruiser. And this thing is 131. That's expensive. Boom. It's going to be a very expensive reef there. Now, what you guys have been commenting, and what I also quite like about this campaign, is that it is absolutely not the stomp that it normally is. It is far more challenging. And it very much feels like I can sometimes win the battles and win the wars even, but I can still lose the campaign. I can still lose more provinces and then slowly have my economy bleed out. And I think that it's a very, very real risk, especially in the current situation. I cannot afford to lose provinces, especially with the merchant loss already compounding the effect of the loss of some of those uh, transport ships. Well, the, the... I mean, the transports plus a loss of economy would be horrendously bad. So I'm hoping that this is going to yield about 13,000 victory points and immediately put a stop to the war with the Germans because I do not need that right now. I cannot let them just walk in. And I simply don't have enough ships to take out half the German navy and force their army logistics down to stop that invasion. So I don't really have a lot of plays beyond just getting a whole bunch of victory points in a very short period of time and force them to go to peace. That's the plan. Whether the AI will accept it? Yeah. I don't know. We shall see. There she goes. Okay, so that was a very, very good win. Yes, it almost cost me the light cruiser Kafkaz, but she survived. 17,000. Damn. At this point, the AI is probably going to be scratching their heads going, yeah. Was that a good idea? No, dude, it was not. It absolutely was not. You should have reconsidered before going to war with the Russian Navy. The Soviet Navy is potentially <laughs> a bit stronger than you might have imagined. Yes, I will agree to your peace treaty. Okay, what else do we have going on in the Baltics? We have a couple of heavy cruisers, but they are of the wrong type. One Comrade Cat, two Comrade Cats, three, and the Durban of the Archangels. The Archangels are hopelessly outdated in this day and age. Um, I am looking to replace them, but they don't really have a whole lot of ships to do that with. Now, these are very well proven ships, but they have not been upgraded. They're the 1900 version of the Comrade Cat. We have... A couple of heavy cruisers armed with 8.4s, 9.7s. Yeah, this is going to be no joke. If I can get some victory points against the Austro-Hungarians, that'd be great. I do, however, want to keep that war going. The reason for that is, if I stop it now, I will not have the opportunity to complete that invasion yet again. If I can, however, take out their ships and continue to take out their ships, that might give me an opportunity to deal a very healthy portion of damage to their economy. Whether that damage will stay there is entirely up to the AI, because, well, they can just snap their fingers and double their GDP, and with that, most likely double their budget for the Navy. So it's not something I can fully control, but I can at least try and take down some more transports. And especially as we're going to be focusing more on submarines and small surface craft warfare. We're going to have to try and take out their merchantmen that way. Contact with the ships. Austro-Hungarian. Holy moly. You make for a stunning thumbnail, but I'm not sure if galleons are quite the way to go. How many guns does that have? The answer is yes, right? Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's 1.8 inch. <laughs> okay. Um, that's not going to have a whole lot of range, is it? Oh, you'd be surprised. What? What? F <laughs> Five and a half clicks. Okay. Unexpected outcome. Uh, that is substantially more dangerous than I had imagined. Because that means they're almost in range. If these things go broadside, they might 
cause extensive fire overwhelms at a rate which is potentially something that will overwhelm the damage controls and burn down some ships which would be bad news anyway these are the ships that we have to fight these are the ships we will sink Unfortunately, I carry no torpedoes. They do. Out to 6.1. Damn, they got a good range. As long as these things don't go broadside, however, they shouldn't be that much of a threat, right? Can we please just... make it look like we're trying to do some damage? There you are. It's still very, very limited, but until I know what level of armor they have, I'm going to stick to HE. It's guaranteed damage. Under this angle, I rather doubt I'll get a whole lot of results with AP anyway. Unless they're really poorly designed. Um, good armor quality. Four belt, six inches. Main belt, ooh, two and a half. That's very curious. If you got a galleon like this, I would want to put that broadside. Which means you're exposing the main belt. I would want to have more armor on the main belt. They don't have it. So if these things do go broadside, on their head be it. Because I do have a pretty decent chance of dealing crippling levels of damage to that. On top of that, it doesn't seem like they got maximum bulkheads. And my AP is penning. Because they got no superstructure armor. Boy, you better run. Good man. I mean, detached Durbin. Durbin's a bit of a, a weird boat as the Archangel. She has the torpedo launchers, but they're only one and a half clicks. Uh, her armor is... <laughs> no. Never mind that. You continue on with the rest of the boys. Because uh, your life is going to get very dangerous if I push you into a... Holy moly. If I push you into a fleet that has 1.8 inch barrage is waiting to happen. Guys, and Elizabeth there got messed up very, very quickly because she happened to be in the way. Target the wells. Continue to circle. Don't go pointing that at me. Just very inconsiderate. Okay, focus on eliminating the Kaiserin. I just want... There you go. I wanted to slow this thing down. And now I can finish off the Kaiserin at ease. Without having to worry about the wells running away. Crap. Durbin's flooding. There's one down. Tiger is next. Eliminate. Now, these heavy cruisers are potentially responsible for dealing quite a lot of damage to my merchant navy. Because I keep losing ships in the Black Sea. Which is something I simply do not understand. Because Europa is standing guard. And Europa is... I don't know. She's not going to refit. But she's not protecting the Merchant Navy either. So I might just need to put her into the Black Sea. But if I do, I am going to be spending a lot more money on just keeping that ship out there. Now let's say that money is something that is a bit hard to come by these days. I'm constantly having to make these trade-offs. Come on, sink the wells. And then sink these others. And have these things running around. Also, I can't have you getting this close to my ships with your pointy sticks. I don't want your torpedoes anywhere near me. Get off. There we go. So what are you, then? Because you're something else. No, you're another galleon. Okay. And another galleon. So they just have, what, like five CAs all of the same type? I mean, that's great, but they'll all die the same way. Just need a few AP pens, and either you're gonna your superstructure is gonna fall off, or <laughs> you're gonna flood very quickly. There you go, flooding. The one point eight, one point eights are giving an angle warning here. You simply don't have the angle to fire. Nice flooding. Belkirch going down. Badly, badly flooding. Fuck off. Should have seen that coming. My bad. <clears throat> Gleb, you've done all you can here. The rest of the boys will take up the slack. 
And we are going to eliminate the survivors. Again, I'm not seeking victory points here. It's nice that I get the victory points, but the protection of my merchant navy is far more important than anything else right about now. You sneaky, sneaky boy. Feltkir, he's also almost reloading her torpedo. There you go. Fuck him up. Flood him. Yeah, you're gone. Next. Last man standing. Not for long as I'm uh, concerned for it. Torpedo launcher is almost ready on this boat, though. Flood it quickly or start dancing around the torpedo again. Up to you. Torpedo away. Target? The Isaac. So the leader of the group, huh? All right. I see how it is. Flash fire. <laughs> Good boy. Done. All right. So that is a couple of heavy cruisers scored. The uh, the new admiral is doing well. He's had nothing but victories. That was almost eighteen thousand victory points again. That is impressive. I like where this is going. Now, we've had the battles. Now we're going to have a look at the invasion fleet, because I also have that. I have a lot of wars going on, and not all of them going very well. Yeah, no. Uh, not all of them going very well. Especially the landings over here are proving to be very difficult. I have a whole 12% chance to succeed. Um, I do have the required amount of tonnage, yes, but my army is just awful. 29% armor logistics. So... I think my army is basically fighting at 29% of their strength, which is awful. Now, the new admiral, his task is to defend the interests of the fleet here. So what I'm going to do is field as many ships as possible. I'm going to try and keep as many areas here safe. I'm going to also put pressure, if I can, on their merchant navy. So we have one battleship here that is not strictly required. We're going to send that over there. This is a Europa class, by the way. Europa refit. So she's ready. I also have like a heavy cruiser that I don't strictly need. And that can patrol the Sea of Japan. It's going to be a little outmatched against the battleship though. So let's not. Sea of Okotsk is not seeing any power projection from them. Yellow Sea is not seeing any power projection from me. Nor the Japanese. And I'm hoping that my Chinese allies can keep that safe. As for the Black Sea, the situation here is that they got that submarine. It's only one of them, but it is annoying. They got another heavy cruiser. And there is all of this. A battleship, seven CLs, three TDs, three TBs. So, uh, I guess we're going to call the Ghostbusters. And we're going to have to not sail into a minefield if we can at all prevent it. Europa and Apostol Piotr out there now. Submarines. The new Wunderwaffe. I will take 25... I will take all of them. Look at how little that costs. You can't even build a DD for this. Boom. 75k per month? They still haven't fixed that? At least that seems to be adding to the build capacity. Hold on. This is something that I addressed in like one of the first iterations of the submarines where I went, hold on. How is it possible that we're seeing something like a bunch of submarines that costs you almost nothing? I mean, sure, they don't have a lot of firepower. But in numbers, you can mess everybody up with it. There. How long is it going to take? Six months? Six months. We got 30 submarines that we're building. It's bizarre. Now, let's spread these guys out. Uh, we're going to put a couple in Vladivostok. So let's say uh, one through four. Go to Vlad. What is Vlad? Vladivostok, here. Um, the rest of you. <clears throat> I want a couple in Korsakov. Because that is very nice and close to the Japanese. I'm going to set another four over there. Korsakov. When it comes to the Black Sea, I want to have submarines in pretty much all my ports. 
I'm gonna have them in Sevastopol, uh, Novorossiysk, and over here in Poti. So a couple to each port, and that should give me a bit more protection. They're not great for protecting your own navy, but you know, they do hunt the other navies. And that is something that is helpful. Um, no. Yeah, Novorossiysk. Yeah, they can defend. All right. And the other one was Poti. All right. The rest I'll probably keep in reserve. That's another 14 submarines, which is just nuts. Well, actually, I might put a, a couple next to Germany. Like Klaipeda seems nice this time of year. Let's put another four over there. Lithuania. Over here else, not really that interesting. The Germans are probably projecting a lot of power here, but it's relatively not that much now that one of their battleships has been vanquished. So, so far, so good. When it comes to further ship design, we got the derps. I think the derps are pretty good. I don't really have a new destroyer design. The biggest destroyer that I have right now is the Vladivostok at 1,050 tons. And I don't believe we've really progressed since that. I still cannot build anything bigger. So what I can do is build more DDs. But I think that for power projection slash merchantman hunting, I can just as easily use a couple of scout cruisers or other light cruisers. So let's see if I can get a new light cruiser designed. But I think I still have bad hulls, which makes it far less appealing to design a new CL. Yeah, we got the semi-armored cruiser too. This is an ancient hull. They're pretty slow at 21 and a half knots, 20 and, uh, 26 knots, light cruiser five, four. Yeah, this thing is awful. This thing is definitely <clears throat> better, but I believe it's pretty much the same design. It's pretty much uh, the Europa class. Oh, sorry, the Scout class. No, sorry, this is the experimental thing. Experimental hull. It's obsolete. I don't know why I really like this hull. It's nice and sleek. But sadly, it is obsolete. I do believe it has the best gear that we have so far. So, yeah, there's not a whole lot else I can put on there. So, unfortunately, as much as I would like to focus on smaller surface combats or surface small, smaller surface combatants, I don't think I can. So, for the time being, submarines is the way to go. Now, that'll be it for the episode. Um, lots has happened and a lot more will happen, especially when those submarines come into fruition. We'll take a few months. That's fine. Up until such a point, I do have another three battleships that I'm building, but, well, they're kind of delayed with the construction of 30 submarines and some repairs to other ships. I hope the Germans are going to go to peace. I hope that the Austro-Hungarians are not going to go to peace uh, and will eventually go to pieces, but we'll see how that goes in a future episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more.